preparing for a home birth. As a midwife, getting ready for my second home birth, this is everything I'm doing to prep my bedroom, bathroom, and kitchen. Welcome back to Every Mama's Midwife. If you're new, my name is Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom, and I'm currently 38 weeks pregnant with my second baby. Today, I wanna to give you a tour and show you everything I've prepared to birth my baby at home. We'll start in the bedroom. To organize everything that I need for baby, I picked up a rolling set of drawers from our local thrift store. A rolling cart would work well too. On top, I have extra sheets and towels for labor, as well as plastic shower curtains. Once we know I'm actually in labor, my husband will take the sheet off of our bed, put down a shower curtain, put the sheet back on, put down the second shower curtain, and then put this one on top. I actually got this sheet and these towels from the thrift store the last time I was pregnant, just so I wouldn't have to worry about getting blood or other uh, birth remnants on my nice sheets and towels. I also stocked up on some electrolytes for breastfeeding. I don't mind room temperature beverages, um, as well as some snacks because when you're breastfeeding, you are starving all of the time. And we have diapers, wipes, receiving blankets, things that we need for birth and then for breastfeeding once baby's here. After the birth, I'll reorganize the top of the cart with a caddy for my water bottle, probably more snacks, and just make the diaper changing supplies more easily accessible. Moving on to the bathroom. A lot of experienced moms will tell you to get diapers for postpartum. I personally do not want to wear a diaper. I don't think that sounds comfortable. So I get pads for bladder leaks instead. They hold a lot more than an overnight maxi pad, so then you don't have to worry about bleeding through your clothes. I would also recommend getting some tux pads. These are thin cotton pads that are soaked in witch hazel. So they're really great for wiping if you have hemorrhoids or stitches and they can provide some pain relief. Um, you don't have to get the Tux brand. The Walmart brand is like four to five dollars for a container of about a hundred. You can also make padsicles. These are pads for you to use immediately postpartum for pain relief. You just take one of your big pads, put some witch hazel and some aloe on it and stick it in the freezer and then use them as needed. Last but not least, what to prep in the kitchen. If you found this video helpful so far, please give it a thumbs up. A lot of midwives will recommend that you eat in labor. I am not one of those midwives. With my last birth, my midwife suggested that I eat something a few times, and every time I just threw it up later. I don't tell my patients not to eat, but I don't encourage them to eat unless they're asking about food. I have cleaned up enough mid-labor vomit to last me a lifetime, so I tell my patients it's fine if you want to eat, but there's a really good chance that you'll see it again later, so try to keep it light. I was able to keep coconut water down last time, so I did buy a few bottles of my favorite coconut water to stock in the fridge. I think that making some freezer meals is also a great idea, especially if you don't have family close by that can come feed you after your baby's born. With my last birth, my mom was still working and wasn't able to come out until I was about three weeks postpartum, so I made a ton of freezer meals. This time, my mom's retired, she's already here, so I'm probably not going to do a ton of meal prep. If you are going to make a bunch of freezer meals, I have two recommendations. First, make things that are easy to eat one-handed. I had my last baby in October, so I had prepped a whole bunch of soups. And then once she was born, I found it really difficult to eat soup and hold my baby at the same time. My daughter would not tolerate being put down even for three minutes. And so it made it really difficult to actually eat meals with my husband. And I definitely dribbled soup on her head more than once. Hands down, the easiest food to eat while holding a baby is a corn dog. It might not be the healthiest choice, but in those first few weeks when you're in survival mode, it's easy for your partner to heat up if they're not super comfortable in the kitchen, it's got protein, and you only need one hand to eat it. Tip number two is to be careful of prepping a bunch of foods that could potentially make your baby gassy if you're planning to breastfeed. Specifically, you should be cautious with dairy, soy, and gluten. I made the mistake last time of prepping a bunch of veggie lasagnas and bean and cheese burritos, and then a few weeks in, figured out that my daughter could not tolerate dairy through my breast milk, and she would be up screaming for hours at night if I had consumed any dairy during the day. We chose to start following a vegan diet when my daughter was about three months old, and it was like overnight she turned into a whole different kid. I wish I would have done it sooner. There may be other things you want to prep, especially if you don't have a big tub and you know you want to labor in the tub, that may be something that you want to look into renting. 
I'm fortunate enough this time around, we live in a house with a really, really huge bathtub. So I'm excited about that. But with my last birth, we just had standard size tubs. And I think I shared in a previous video, I actually found it hard to get comfortable in the tub in labor and found that the shower provided better pain relief anyway. So we didn't bother with renting a tub and I don't regret it. I've also found that from other home births I've attended, it can be really hard to get enough hot water into a rental tub because they're really, really big. And more than once I've found myself boiling water on the stove for a patient. I hope you found this video helpful. I'm going to try and get a birth plan video made before the baby comes, but anything could happen at this point. I had a lot of really uncomfortable Braxton Hicks today. I'm feeling kind of over it. I see my midwife in two days and I am going to have her check my cervix and do a membrane sweep. I'll keep you guys posted, so make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching.